Hi Joe, it's Astro Bloke here. I just wanted you to know us Brits pump iron too. <sighs> Bloody marvellous that tea. everyone and welcome back to astrobloke.co.uk my name is Glenn and today's video is part two of the astro photography challenge across the pond if you haven't checked out part one please do it's up here it's a collaboration between myself um, based in the UK with Joe from Joe's astrophoto.com who's based in Colorado in the United States of America we basically came up with a, a, an idea of collaborating together and we decided to have a challenge where we took images of the same target and we processed each other's data. So today's video is going to be the processing of Joe's data and at the end you will see uh, the image that I finally produced. Um, I'll also show you the image that Joe produced from my data and a final image of both the data sets put together. So I hope you enjoy the video please consider liking and subscribing if you do and also please check out Joe's uh, YouTube channel as he's a great guy and he's got some really interesting videos to watch so let's uh, delay no further and get into the editing so uh, welcome to my PC we'll just load up PixInsight and get everything we need together I've received Joe's Masters of the Flaming Star uh, in the SHO palette and I'm just going to load them into PixInsight and uh, see what we can do to process them. I've got some uh, workflow shortcuts of my favourite shortcuts that I like to use which I'm just going to load in there and then I'm just going to find Joe's Masters and put them in. So bits of the video, what I'm going to do so it doesn't uh, drag on for ages is uh, any processes that need a bit of time to run I'll either uh, cut, pause the video or fast forward to the, to the finished bit. Uh, but we'll just have a look at the different masters here. So we've got the sulphur, the oxygen and the hydrogen alpha. Nice. A few halos around the stars on the oxygen there. And the sulfur is quite nice actually. I don't get uh, that kind of image on my sulfur filter. And I do need to check on that. I'm not sure if it's my light pollution. But I just don't seem to get that kind of detail on my sulfur. Okay so we're going to jump uh, into the first stage here. Which is a dynamic crop. Uh, in geometry there we get dynamic crop up and we'll set it on the uh, hydrogen alpha let's have a look here there's not too much uh, on the edges here from the dithering so we we'll try not to lose too much of the information we'll just bring it in as much as uh, as little as we can Oops. Okay, we drag this off, this instance off, and we can close that dynamic crop, and then we can use that instance. We'll just give it a name, we'll call it crop, so we don't get confused with anything else, and then we can just drag it onto each of the images, and they're all cropped the same. And we'll just put this over here, in case we need it again. So the first thing I like to do is a uh, dynamic background extraction. Oop. Let's just open that and close that. Okay. So I've got a set uh, one that I've made and saved with the boxes around the outside. And what I like to do is uh, a division first of all and then a subtraction. And I'll do that on each of these images. I'm just going to move these boxes around first of all to make sure that I'm not highlighting too many stars or nebulosity. And 
once I've got the HA set and I've done a division and a subtraction I'll then do that on the oxygen and the sulfur and I'm just going to fast forward this okay that's the background extraction all done so the next thing I like to do is uh, just sort the labelling out on these masters. I'll just change them to uh, single letters, so O for oxygen, S for sulphur, and H for hydrogen. Just drag them over here. So we got S, H, and finally the O for oxygen. Uh, just something I do just to keep the uh, desktop as tidy as possible, otherwise I end up in a complete mess. I'm going to combine the SHO using the uh, color combination tool. So we first of all need to stretch all of these. now. Some people uh, combine the um, masters before stretching in a linear state, but whenever I do that, I, I always find I end up with a very, I don't know, out of control colour to play with. So, for me personally, I find it easier to uh, stretch the data and then combine it and it just uh, works better with my uh, workflow. I'm not sure my workflow is like others. Um, it's a little bit unique in places, but uh, it seems to work for me. So, uh, okay, so let's put sulfur in red, hydrogen in green, and oxygen in blue. Okay. That's uh, about right. Pretty green with plenty of purple stars. Let's just put this over here. Oh, try and make it a bit bigger. Let's try again. There we go. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'll um, get rid of some of these purple stars. I'll invert the image. And I'll use SCNR and remove the green because as you can see the stars are green at the moment. I'll get rid of them. And then we'll invert that back. That should look a little bit better. Okay, still quite blue up there. The blue halos are still quite prominent on those stars there. Uh -huh. The next stage I will do will be using uh, Starnet++ to remove the stars from the image and I find that then when I do my colour changes I don't affect the stars. If you use this process um, I've got a video uh, in my uh, collection uh, of how to turbocharge Starnet++ so if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card and you download the CUDA toolkit, you can speed up the process of this uh, enormously. So what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, making a star mask so I can pull the stars uh, out of this image. So not only leave a starless uh, color image, but I'll have the stars separately and I'll add them back in once I'm finished with the background. And what I find then is any stretching and color changes I make don't affect the stars. So now I've got the stars I need to save these as a TIFF and that will be a 16 bit and we'll just leave that as star mask and we can shrink that down and just put that out of the way for a sec. What I need to do now is grab the hydrogen alpha uh, master, pull off a clone and we'll call this uh, Loom for Luminance. This is going to be our Luminance layer. It's going to put the detail uh, back in later, as you'll see. 
So we don't need a star mask on this one. Uh, we just need to uh, make this a starless uh, background to match the color one that we've already made. So these are actually running in real time, so you can see how quick the Starnet++ process is once it's been accelerated. Okay, so now we've got the Starless HA layer. Let's have a look at that. It's not too noisy, but we're going to run this through Denoise, uh, Topaz AI Denoise. But before I do that, I need to up the contrast a bit and get some of the details to pop a bit more. So under utilities, uh, we've got dark structure enhance. Uh, just leave it on the default for now and we'll just run this. And what this should do is um, put a bit more definition into this uh, luminance layer that we're going to be using. Yeah, that's nice. Sometimes it can put a bit too much in there. So um, it is a bit of trial and error sometimes with the settings, but that, that's quite nice, I like that. And I'm going to call up the uh, histogram transformation. Let's just get the uh, details of this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to darken it down a little bit. Um, and just try and just give it a bit more contrast. So we need it to, because it's the detail layer, we just want it to have a nice bit of contrast. So just darken the background a bit. And we'll just bring those midtones up just a teeny bit. Okay, that's good. Right, I'm, yep, I'm happy with that. That looks good. So the um, let's just close this down. And the next step, we just save this as a TIFF. Sixteen bit, and then we can call up. Topaz uh, AI Denoise or Denoise AI and uh, we'll load uh, that file in and the top left corner there is the original we got all clear below that to the right is the denoise and below that is the low light um, so I'm just gonna have a look at the detail sometimes the low light smooths it out too much and you end up losing some definition um, it just depends on the uh, on the target sometimes the denoise is better than the low light sometimes the low light is better than the denoise it's just a case of uh, just just having a look I think I'm just up the uh, let's have a look at different areas and just see how how it's affecting the sort of light dark and mid areas on the image I'm just going to take that sharpness down a little bit yeah that's yeah I think that's definitely looking better on the denoise side to uh, I'm just gonna okay, I'm just gonna save that now and what that do is save it as the same name uh, but with denoise next to it okay that file is finished processing so we can close that now and we can open if I just get this out of the way and if we go to the file where we've just been, there'll be a luminance with denoise, and that's the denoised version. That looks quite nice, and we can compare them. Yeah. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, we'll put that down. Now, this is actually RGB and it needs to be a luminance layer so if we tick that tab up there on the left it extracts the luminance because if we try and put the luminance in on an RGB and it's an RGB file it just won't happen so we need to make it 
a luminance. So that's our luminance that we're going to use for our details. Let's, uh, let's put it somewhere where I can find it. Put them over there and we'll put that up there. Okay, so the next job is to sort the colours out on the actual flame itself. So I'm going to be using uh, colour masks under utilities. Uh, so we go script, utilities, colour mask. Um, the background, we got those halos. So um, I normally just use uh, magenta for the background, but I think we're going to use blue as well. So I'm just going to use a blur of three and select blue and see what mask is uh, produced hopefully it'll include those halos and yes it does so that's good so there's one mask so um, that's good that's uh, what we need so that the video isn't too long uh, I'm gonna make uh, mask color masks for magenta green uh, cyan and yellow and I'll just fast forward this video to the end of the yellow making so the next step is to uh, pull up curves transformation and we'll call up the blue color mask pull that across to the uh, tab and put a mask on there shrink that and then we can click up the top here for show mask so that we don't have to we can get that hidden we can see what we're doing and then we're going to call up the blue I'm going to see if we can get these halos uh, down a bit so we're just going to pull these down now with the color mask there's uh, obviously a lot of scope with uh, sort of your sort of artistical flair um, with the background here I'm just looking to try and get uh, the halos to be as minimal as possible and get it nice and dark so I'm going to uh, fast forward the next section as it's quite lengthy but basically um, just working down through the masks I call them up and just make adjustments to the main colours like blue, uh, green and red and um, it really isn't a set way of working I kind of just go with the flow and uh, get a feel for where the sort of colours want to go with uh, with a target I might have an idea in mind of what I want but um, with this one I want it to be a nice golden flame um, and then hopefully get the blue to come through as well from the main star that uh, sits behind it so it's sort of kind of shining through that's my goal so I'm just gonna forward this bit with the, all the curved that I do all the little experiments but it is very much a personal choice uh, with what you come up with so I'm going to get this uh, this coloured background finished and then we'll look to add the luminance layer okay so not looking too bad so we're getting to the point now where we need to put our HA layer uh, on top so I'm just going to call up this and I think I'm just going to darken it down a little bit no major changes just bring that background down just a teeny bit bring that dark down that's nice okay Okay, yep, I like that. That's good. That's a bit noisy, but what we actually do before we put the luminance layer on is we use convolution. Um, so let's pull my luminance layer there. That's ready to go. And then call up convolution, and we're going to blur this now. Um, and say don't be afraid to blur it because all the details in the HA so we'll just blur this down and what this will do is it will keep all the colour but clean clean it up it will blur out and you put oh that hasn't worked what am I doing that's better there we go 
so that's been blurred and what we can do now is call up LRGB make sure the RGB are unticked and then we put the luminance layer on now tick chrominance noise and drag it on top and then picks in sight we'll now put that luminance layer on and we should end up with a nice coloured detailed background it still won't look right because it will need the stars being put back in and I'll be doing that in Photoshop uh, you can put the stars back in through PixInsight you can use uh, Pixel Math and put the star mask back in but I like the control of Photoshop because it allows me to uh, do a little bit of work on the stars easily and uh, and then if the stars are too strong I can always uh, use the opacity layers to um, get them where I want so this is going to be starless I'm going to save that as a tiff uh, up there with the others and again it will be a 16 bit ok now I need to uh, shrink this and open Photoshop and then open the uh, starless and the star mask files and then it will be a case of just putting them together um, I think I'm gonna flip these images because uh, I want the flaming star up the other way so have a look at the star mask good so I'm gonna go back to the star list and just gonna turn that over okay good do the same with the star mask and then you can go into camera raw filter and uh, adjust your stars and then we add the layer onto the stylist layer you add that by doing control a control c to copy and then control v to paste it in and then with the stars on top we can play with the opacity to get them to be at the right level so they're not overpowering but they're not too faint and any final tweaks that need to be done can be done and there's your image <laughs>